This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Airfix's Cromwell, ICM's Skymaster, Tacom's Bruno, Edward's Z37, and Hobby Boss's Puma. New product rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Welcome to New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's monthly look at the latest kits. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Elizabeth Nash. We have a bunch to get through this episode, so let's jump in with Airfix's 135th scale Cromwell Mark IV. This kit of the British fast cruiser tank from World War II marks Airfix's first foray into producing kits in the popular armor scale, although it has reboxed other manufacturers' kits, notably Academy. The hull builds from a belly with hatches and inner and outer side plates to house the Christie suspension arms. Separate bow and rear plates, as well as internal braces, finish the lower hull. Nicely molded inner and outer road wheels with separate hubs, sandwich poly caps, idlers and drive sprockets, and a choice of sharply detailed Lincoln length or vinyl tracks ground the Cromwell. The upper hull comprises a base part with the fenders and glasses, front deck with turret race, periscopes, and separate hatches and driver's plate and the engine deck with molded panel lines and raised intake. An optional deflector is provided for the exhaust at the rear. Toolboxes, front and rear fender extensions, tools, lights with brush guards, and the bow machine gun finish the hull. An optional culling cutter is provided for the bow. The turret has a base, roof with separate plates for the back and sides with large bosses and shell ejection ports. Three front plates are included, but only one is used here. Likewise, three main guns are provided, although only one is used here also, fitting into the appropriate mantlet with the coaxial machine gun. This kit uses the early commander's hatch without the vision blocks, and cheek stowage boxes finish the turret. A small photo etched metal fret supplies a screen for the exhaust and glasses details. A small decal sheet provides markings for two British Army Cromwells one with whitewash on the turret, the other overall olive drab with the cutter. This looks like a nicely detailed kit of the Cromwell Mark IV, and it's obvious there are other versions of the vehicle to come, including the Mark VI, which was released concurrently. Next up is ICM's 148 scale O2A. This military version of Cessna Skymaster flew with the United States Air Force as an observation and forward air control aircraft in Vietnam and later. Molded in medium gray plastic, the airframe components feature finely engraved panel lines. This late production version provides an alternative left fuselage half with a larger window that wraps onto the roof shown here on the full span upper wing. The lower halves of the wings are supplied in left and right sections. The ailerons are separate, as are the rudders, that mount on the finely molded booms divided by the horizontal stabilizer with separate elevator. Much of the interior will be visible through all of the windows, including the seats, instrument panel with separate shroud, control yokes, pedals, racks of radio equipment, and a pair of M16 rifles. Up front behind the nose piece is a facsimile of the engine with some plumbing that fits over the nose gear bay with its simple leg and wheel. Nothing is visible of the rear engine as it is completely covered with the upper intake capped by a one-piece lip. Fine two-blade props finish the power plants. The main gear legs, capped by two-part wheels with separate brakes, fit under a cover. Wing pylons can be fitted with rocket and or gun pods. A forest of antennas finish the airframe. The beautiful clear parts mostly fit from inside, but the instructions include a template to cut masks that should improve painting. Nicely printed decals provide stencils and dials for the instrument panel, as well as markings for three U.S. Air Force O2As. Two in Southeast Asia during the Vietnam War with gray airframes and white upper wings, and a single overall gray aircraft. This is a terrific looking kit of a neat and important aircraft. Following on from the Yamato turret, Tacom brings us a 172nd scale kit of the Bismarck's B or Bruno turret. This is the turret second from the front of the German battleship, which sits above the deck. It mounts on a base, including molded planks on both deck sections, as well as hatches and other fixtures. The support is split in half and sturdy tabs fit the base. The turret comprises two solidly molded sections, the lower with supports for the guns 
and the upper part with hatches and rivets. The guns come in halves that fit elevating mounts. Optional blast bags allow the guns to be posed in neutral or elevated position. The turret gets dressed up with range finders, fume extractors, ladders, and tow rails. The balance of the parts detail the base, including vents, electrical boxes, covered rope or hose reels, and more. A sturdy photo etch brass fret supplies walkways, railings, and hatches for the vents. No decals are provided, but there are five marking options in the instructions. Four from the Bismarck's last three weeks. I give Tacom a lot of credit for kits like this. They're interesting and a nice break from the norm, if you're so inclined. Add a couple of Kriegsmarine sailors, repainting the turret, and you have a great diorama. Speaking of interesting and unusual subjects, let's take a look at Edward's 172nd scale Z37A. Designed in Czechoslovakia in the 1960s for use across the Soviet bloc, the tough, sturdy airplane was an agricultural crop duster. About 700 were produced. The beautifully molded fuselage has a few hatches, but is mostly smooth to represent the canvas-covered frame construction. A one-piece lower wing shows the kink at the point the landing gear attach, as well as fine rivets and subtle raised ribs. Surface detail mirrored in the upper halves. The ailerons are molded in place, but the slotted flaps and fixed leading edge slats, as well as the elevator and rudder, are separate. The cockpit, much of it visible under the large canopy, includes a floor, rear bulkhead, seat, and controls. There are five choices for the instrument panels on the photo etch metal fret, and the instructions note that the interior colors differed from plane to plane. Under a three-part cowl, behind a fan to opening, sits an engine. The petite prop finishes the power plant. The roof includes the opening for the chemical hopper, and a fertilizer spreader can be fitted underneath. Decals and color diagrams provide markings for six Z37As from the Czech Republic, East Germany and India, Slovakia and Russia, and Hungary. In addition to masks for the canopy, the kit includes masks to paint the stripes for several of the schemes. If unusual or agriculture aircraft are your thing, check out this kit from Edward. Finally, here's Hobby Boss's 135th scale Puma, an Israeli combat engineering vehicle. Based on the Israeli Shot Call, a modernized Centurion tank fitted with a Continental diesel engine, the Puma doubles as a heavy armored personnel carrier. The lower hull is a single part with the sides and lower section of the bow and rear. The suspension comprises multi-part bogies with separate springs, road wheels with separate hubs and tires, as well as drive sprockets and idlers. Individual link tracks ground the vehicle. Much of the upper hull is a single part with the glasses and engine deck louvers. In addition to the fenders that get detailed with the exhausts, jerry cans, smoke launchers, and more, the upper hull features a casemate topped with an eight-sided armor and glass block fighting compartment with two machine guns. A remote weapon station finishes the upper hull. Armored fender skirts and bar armor dress it out. Clear parts provide the ballistic glass blocks and optics. A photo etched metal fret supplies straps, brackets, and other details. A large decal sheet is included, but the single color diagram uses just one of the decals. Check references to see where the others can be placed. There's plenty of well-molded parts in Hobby Boss's Puma, and it looks like it'll be an interesting build. Look for reviews of the Cromwell, Skymaster, and Puma at finescale.com. And you can see more new products in the May issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. I'm Elizabeth Nash. We'll see you next time. Finally, here's Hobby Boss's 135th scale Puma. I... Finally, I'm going to get this line right. Tacom brings us a 172nd scale kit of the Bismarck's B or Bruno turret. This is the trip said. Yeah. <laughs> this is the what? Ha. Yeah. This is the. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> you catch that? Good. <laughs>